buckle up for another episode of Ghost Facers, a supernatural rewatch podcast. My name is Richard, and sitting shotgun, as always, is my brother in podcasting, Reed. He can't see me. He doesn't even know that I'm here. Reed. He doesn't know that I'm listening to a podcast. My, I, I can hear you. He, he'll never know. I don't know, know where I'm you here. are, but I can. I'm invisible, and that means he can't see me or hear me. Oh, you're just, that's how invisibility works. You're just behind the chair. Uh, uh, <laughs> don't tell my mom. <laughs> don't get rid of my boobs, <laughs> Mr. Anderson. <laughs> Let's get into it. <laughs> Welcome to Ghost Facers. Today we're discussing season four, episode number eight, Wishful Thinking. That's right. We're we're near the end of the series, right? That's wishful thinking. <laughs> hey, maybe I'll get to do my own segment this week. That's uh, wishful thinking. Hey, we've got a review from. I'm not stopping you. Go read it. <laughs> from Jer- I won't get in your way. <laughs> from Jeremy Torres via Facebook, who says, "I don't remember how I discovered this podcast, but I'm so glad I did." In about four months' time, I've managed to listen from the first episode to the most recent episode. These guys are fans in the truest sense. They are the deep dives into behind-the-scenes aspects I'd never known about. And I consider myself probably not the hugest fan, but big enough of a fan to have seen the show multiple times through and have gotten two related tattoos. Hey. Sorry. I don't think I'm that big of a fan, but I've seen the whole show multiple times and have have a couple of tattoos. You're a big fan. I don't know what to tell you, man. Uh, (laughs) I think you might be a big SPN fan. (laughs) (laughs) Um, There are international titles, which is always a hoot. There is research into real world inspirations behind the episodes. They point out a myriad of Easter eggs littered throughout the show. There's comedy. There's chemistry. Oh, yeah. Well, there was. Sexual tension. (laughs) Oh my god, it's been weeks. You gotta get over it. It was last week. There are even dad jokes. And of course, the thirst. The thirst is real with these guys. I'm getting a lot we're getting a lot of this lately. I'm starting to think that maybe we're a problem. I don't see how that's uh and it's fantastic. As a straight man myself, uh yeah, straight. The way we all have to say it. Yep. Uh, I too can appreciate the magnificent <laughs> of the physique that tends to be cast in this sh- in this show. Though I am and always will be Team Dean. I mean, sure, yeah, obviously. I cannot downplay when Sam really and truly becomes Moose in the greatest sense. That's fair. It's great to see some other dudes that can appreciate a good-looking dude, but also some of these women are too stunning to be real humans. What the hell? Where the hell do they get these people? <laughs> yeah. I love, like, this review. Yeah, yeah. Just kind of be like, and another thing. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes they reach the appropriate barrier for thirst, and they wipe away the salt and keep going anyways. Somehow, the more jokes, uh, the, mo- the more the joke is beaten, the funnier it gets. Good. I'm glad that, <laughs> that that's the case. I mean, you're in the right place. Yeah. <laughs> You've uh, come to the right podcast. They've managed to make cringe, uh, hu- cringe hilarious, and it's truly a work of art. Listen, put that right on the put that right on the like podcast artwork. That's my tombstone. That's what <laughs> in all seriousness, it's a fantastic podcast in and of itself, but it's a must listen to anyone who is also a fan of Supernatural. I've recommended it to all of my friends who share a love for the show. You won't be disappointed. I can't wait to see how the show evolves and continues after the initial seven years it'll take to get through the main episodes. Five out of five. Keep up the great works. You help make my uh, Monday's uh, days uh, to look forward to. Unrelated. I'm sure I'm not the only one. I'm sure you guys have commented before, but Reed and Richard. Reed Richards, please tell me you've made that connection before. (laughs) That's awesome. That's a great review. I do just want to point out that you weirdly... (laughs) What do you mean? You weirdly skipped like a paragraph from the message we got sent. I don't think I did. I've got it right here. (laughs) At what point did you realize that's what I was pulling from? (laughs) Right away. (laughs) 
Uh, it says, how dare Richard say the lore section is the most boring part? I don't think clearly he doesn't realize you save the best bits for last. <laughs> I don't think why does. else would lore be the anchor of the show? I, I eat that shit up. The thing dragging it. Down Isn't here. that the whole point of the Dr. DC podcast? Quick plug for our other show. Like, You're exploring yeah, like the lore that. of these superheroes. Deep breath. I'm with you on this, Reed. As a fellow nerd who Jeez. digs weird lore, you're not the only one who feels the sheer disrespect. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Oh, also, sorry. There's another paragraph that you skipped before. No, I don't think I did that either. So uh, this this comes before the other bit I just uh, read. Uh I just finished listening to It's the Great Pumpkin Sam Winchester. I wanted to give you a chance to slight Richard <laughs> by giving you a screenshot of my review on Facebook, uh, which was naturally glowing in all facets, so you could steal his bit, but it has somehow been banished to purgatory, blah, blah, blah. But I'm the bigger person. I let you just do the review anyway. So there you go. No even one will ever know if that other Clearly, you're written. without honor. We're just skipping the bits that made you look bad. Uh, I Maybe the parts didn't really exist. <laughs> God, that explains so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that, that uh, those parts feel a little red pill to me. I don't know. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for the review. Yes, and the, the support in this trying time. The review was really good. Uh, th- Hashtag Team Reed. Jesus Christ! I thought it was Team Dean. Yep. <laughs> So let's talk about this episode, uh, which aired November 6th, 2008. Right. Written by Ben Edlund and Lou Bolo. Little bit of Sam Winchester in my life. Oh, okay. bit. Lou Vega, Lou Bolo. I don't know. It's, it's all I got. <laughs> it's Sunday morning, and I've been sick all week. Directed by Robert Singer. Bobby. Bobby. Viewed by an estimated. 3.24 million viewers. Pretty good. Yeah. Let's see if the promo has anything to do with it. I already watched it. Did you really? Yeah. Really? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> cool, man. <laughs> what a cool thing to lie about, am I yeah. right? Oh, you you got me. <laughs> Listen, man, I'm hurt. I'm hurting. <laughs> All right, let's watch this. God, these are bad. Here, the, these are so bad. All, like, it's the tone is always wrong, but also they give away some of like the shit that happens, <laughs> and that's okay. Honestly, if you got if you if you just gave, it's always the funny episodes that they like are like, oh my god, I can't believe the town this. where wishes go wrong. But it's also trying to be playful too by going like, welcome to Wishville, which is like not a thing in the episode. Yeah, like the town's not called Wishville. No. It's, it's concrete Washington. Yes. It's yeah, such a weird approach. Like, I feel like they're almost getting their tonality, but the like, the actual script for these promos don't l- align. But it, yeah, and it's like... <sighs> They're showing things that in the episode play more silly. Yes. Even the serious things, getting struck by lightning or whatever, yeah. they all play silly yes. in the episode. But in the back, you have this like... <laughs> yeah. Weird, creepy calliope music, like you're supposed to be scared of the kid, you know, holding yes. Dean or whatever. Like, so The episode weird. plays it silly. This promo wants to play it silly but has none of the muscles to do it no it's so weird i don't get it they're horrible yeah. these are horrible pr- i think we've only ever so far it's gotten one gotten one that we were like yeah you did it it was you nailed it It was the the monsters episode right it yeah i think monsters. it was actually that was the one that they were like and i guess that episode is so stylized you couldn't possibly do it wrong yes but yeah we it's so weird i know i know well Let's talk about the episode title, Wishful Thinking, and its international titles. Sure. I mean, the name itself is sort of just a term, yeah. but it, it's uh, it's not even, it's just a it's common phrase. Like, I, I don't think it's even... Are you trying to look for a word to describe when you just put two words together and use them? Yes. Right. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's Yeah. It's just a term. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> the only one who got it, actually, everybody got it for the most part, except for some small adjustments. Sure. Uh, Germany, Poland, France, they all sort of got wishful thinking. Mostly That's basically close, what sure, it yeah. is. Um, 
But some everybody everybody else sort of went for the more specific thing in the episode that it all comes from. Oh, uh, Bear blows his brains out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Brazil is the wishing well. Sure. And Hungary is the well of wishes. Sure. But that's basically Did anybody it. do like haunted coin? No, magic no, coin, no. no like nothing super fun in this. I think because it's, again, it's just two words put together. <laughs> Everyone's yeah. like... We've got something like this. Yeah, like we have two words we could put together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like it's. It, I, I. It did make me think about the, the like a wishing well thing. Like how, where does that come from? And like, is that a thing anywhere else? Well, if we had a lore segment, maybe we'd find <laughs> out. Jesus Christ. But I, I did you have you ever used a, like a wishing well? I mean, when I was a kid. But yeah, I remember like malls used to have them. I haven't really seen no, them in a I'm long time. Not a fucking child. <laughs> I don't make wishes. I don't dream anymore. Jesus. <laughs> Can you tell this is the beginning of 2022? <laughs> we, haven't, we haven't recorded in two weeks. It's the darkest time of year. And the last time we recorded, I got angry. Yeah. So the real stank on this episode. There's also <laughs> no future music for this episode. <laughs> uh, TV. That's can- not true, actually. Well, um, here, I'll pull it up since you did not. Uh, music Friday Night by Howell Freundlich Overdrive. What? Uh, plays in the background of the restaurant when uh, weird dinner in there. And then there's a main theme, Peter Blood, which is a, like it's a music that's playing on the TV in the guy's house. Sure. Uh, so that's under the music section if you bothered to look it up. The place I usually go to get that didn't say there was any. Well, well I guess maybe you don't have all the answers. <laughs> We're either going to kill each other or have sex. I don't know. One of the two is going to happen. God, I hope it's only one of the two. I hope it's both. Uh-oh. I'm going to kill you into an orgasm. <laughs> uh, You heard me. That's how it works. Uh-oh. Trust me. Your honor. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> uh, TV Lord. Guide describes this episode as a wishing well is discovered to be the real thing when a girl's teddy bear comes to life. All right. Uh, someone wins the lottery and a local geek gets a beautiful girlfriend. I, mean, I think that's an unfair way to write that. But but Shh. Sam and Dean realize disaster waits in the wings in this town where reality and fantasy are blurred. This episode is a mirror of the book Needful Things by Stephen King. In the book, as in the episode, people receive their heart's desire only to have those desires backfire against them. So look at that. There you go. Well, before we get into today's episode, why don't we open up Dad's journal and learn about some of the real world lore. Sure. Which I've got right here. <laughs> Flip the table. <laughs> Just walk out. See your door slam. <laughs> Taken so seriously. A thing that it means so little in your life. That's not true. I care about this. Stop looking at me when you say that. I care about this. This thing we have. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Let's see what the lore says about Tiamat. Oh. Yeah. Tiamat. So, also known as the Glistening One. Hey, that's wink, my nickname. <laughs> wink. <laughs> it's an ancient Babylonian goddess. Um, she was goddess of the sea and a symbol of chaos and like primordial creation. Like, uh, she and this other god, Abzu, uh, who is meant to be like. Um, like a groundwater god, sure. they get together, and it's like the mixing of those like uh, waters of creation, like creates the lesser gods of Babylonian myth. Yeah, um, uh, yeah. So uh, those two ideas, though, the idea of being like chaotic and like creation and things like that, they do kind of operate together, and also kind of contrast each other so there's like versions i think that put more emphasis on being like a creator uh you know uh the mixing waters with abzu the stuff like that um and you know even in kind of the main text where she's talked about she's generally relatively though chaotic peaceful 
up to a point. Mm -hmm. Uh, Then the other version is (coughs) the embodiment of like violence and chaos. She's usually depicted as like a sea serpent or a dragon. uh, Hell yeah. Yeah. Um, So she did. She there are lots of references to Tiamat, but she doesn't become like a major part of Mesopotamian mythology until around 1750 BCE. Uh, in this creation epic that I'm not going to pronounce correctly called the uh, Enuma Elish, which is this Babylonian poem. Um, She's credited with the creation of monsters, dragons, and other such creatures like scorpion people and mermen and things like that. Mermen, daddy. Mermen, Tiamat. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So... Though she created these monsters because in <laughs> in the in this myth, Abzu, the other kind of water god that she was uh, paired with, <laughs> is captured and killed. Okay, and she wants vengeance and things like that. Um, so she creates eleven monsters that I'll just run through quick here. Uh, Basmu, a venomous snake, which amateur uh, like etymology here. Probably similar origin to the word basilisk. Oh. Bas moon, basilisk. I'm assuming bas means something. I think it means venom ah. because the moo comes up in a lot of other ones that have um, snake sure. as like a description. So I think bas might mean something about Venomous, that. Yeah. So I wouldn't be surprised to learn that basilisk comes from the same kind of root. Yeah, interesting. This. So bas moo, the venomous snake. Uh, Usumgalu, the great dragon, uh, Musmahu, the exalted serpent, uh, Mushusu, the furious snake, Lamu, the hairy one, Ugalu, the big weather beast, uh, Uridimu, the mad lion, uh, Girtablulu, the scorpion man, Umu Dabrutu, violent storms, uh, Kululu, uh, the fish man, and uh, Kusariku, the bull man. Like sounds a, like an like awesome, a minotaur. It like, sounds like an awesome like X-Men team. <laughs> yeah. To me, my Kusariku. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um so in the epic, she creates these um monsters to fight the other gods to avenge Abzu's death and things like that. She's eventually killed by Marduk, the storm god, who uses her corpse to make heaven and earth basically jesus um and i think maybe like uses her blood or the blood of the monsters to make man like to make people like mortals whoa um so her eyes her weeping eyes are said to become the sources of the tigris and euphrates rivers uh in the middle east so Um, is this like her tail is the milky way so which like group worships Tiamat? So, so, like... so this is uh, Babylon. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the, the in the middle of Mesopotamia. So we're talking like Iraq, like oh, where okay. modern day Iraq is. But this is, is like r- is roughly more or less where far, Babylon was far before like Jesus. Uh, oh like yeah, we are like almost two thousand years before. Interesting. Supposedly, Christ. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so quite quite a long time ago. Wow. Um, uh, it's thought that Tiamat might be a Babylonian version of earlier Sumerian mythology. So there's a, a sea goddess named Namu. The big difference there in Sumerian is that Namu is like always nurturing and that and Tiamat has this like real violent chaos streak. Mm. So the other thought is that she's actually like a blend of Namu and this other Sumerian god. Um, Named uh, Inanna, who later is known as Ishtar, uh, but that's the Sumerian goddess of like love and fertility, but also war and violence. And a terrible movie. Although, I, I don't know, man. After I listened to that blank check up, and I was like, I think I won't watch Ishtar. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> it sounds like the first 40 minutes are great. Sure, yeah. <laughs> um, so, this theory is a little bit shaky. There's not a ton of academic consensus, but that's the the thought is that Tiamat might be a, a slight transliteration of those two gods put together. Sure. Um, 
Likewise, there is some notion that the story of Tiamat kind of represents a shift in Babylonian myth away from female gods and towards male gods. So under the reign of uh, King Hammurabi, who law students out there, shout out to you, probably have to study the code of Hammurabi. It's really? one of like the foundational texts of modern law. <laughs> Is that the like split the kid in half thing or no? Oh. That's Abraham, isn't uh, it? <laughs> I don't know. What's the code? I I I don't remember this, oh. but I remember in law class they were like, "You got to know some basics." Code of Hammurabi. Wow, <laughs> like Magna Carta. Like you point to a couple of things that uh, are okay. not like they're referencing it in a court. Be like according to the Code of Hammurabi, but it's, they're like foundational to our understanding or the development of law. Of law. Okay. Um. So under the reign of King Hammurabi, there was this kind of like shift where they were moving away from like they were promoting male gods as opposed or replacing female gods. And so the story of Tiamat is almost representative of that because she gets supplanted by Marduk, who after Marduk, Marduk. after I keep trying not to say it. (laughs) I keep trying not to say it like Martok because yeah, I've, I've been watching so much DS9 lately. Um, um, like Tiamat has uh, this thing called the, oh, it's like the Tablet of Destinies or something like that is what it's called. Sure. And it basically bestows like the divine right to rule the universe mm-hmm. in Babylonian myth. Sure. She gives it to her chosen champion after Abzu's death, whose uh, name is Kingu. Um, and Kingu has it, and then when Marduk kills Kingu, he takes it, becomes the the ruler. So there's this like literal like we're taking power from female gods and giving it to yeah. male gods kind of thing. Again, I think that's kind of like maybe sort of shaky, like not necessarily the most like academically supported reading of it, but it is like undeniable that in the time of Hammurabi, around when this poem was written there was this kind of shift. But I think some people want to say like Babylonian culture shifted from matriarchal to patriarchal. There's like no evidence of that. It's more just like the stories moved away from female characters, probably deliberately, but it wasn't like the whole society flipped on its head or something. Yeah. But yeah. So that's Tiamat. Tiamat. Chaotic sort of chthonic. Uh, sea god. I don't know what you're trying to like. It's a, a famous Italian song, Tiamo. Tiamo. Oh, okay. I don't know Italian songs. <laughs> Generally. <laughs> what, a, what a fucking net to cast. I don't know Italian songs. Oh, sorry. That's not true. I know one. When the moon hits <laughs> your eye like oh. a big pizza oh, pie. I feel like I'm amore. back in Venice. I, I'm, yeah. Do you remember that early like viral video of it's some like public access TV network or whatever? And this guy is trying to sing Amore and he doesn't remember the words. No. I can't remember what his name is. Like, my name is John something. He's just like very boring. Yeah. He goes, when the moon hits your eye like <laughs> more. That's really funny. I'll have to find it. It's it's like such like an early viral video. That's what I think of every time I hear that song. Now that's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Support for Ghost Facers is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below the waist grooming champions of the world. Manscaped offers precision engineered tools for your family jewels. Manscaped just launched their fourth generation trimmer, the Lawnmower 4.0. You heard that right, the 4.0. Join over 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped. With this uh, exclusive offer for you, 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code SPN20 at manscaped.com. Imagine shaving with a sleek, well-designed, and optimized trimmer that makes shaving time your favorite time in the bathroom. I'm one of the first people to try the new 4.0, and I'm blown away by the performance. The craftsmanship the de- and the details on the 4.0 are next level. I, th- I've i been terrified to use my razor for years because of uh, nicks and cuts and all that stuff. This is way better than that. I mean, I, I literally had zero problems using this. It's 100% worth the, the, uh, the purchase. And yeah, you definitely want to get into this. 
Manscaped engineering the ultimate groin and body trimmer by focusing on intelligent functionality and the incredible comfortable grooming experience. Their fourth generation trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents. Thanks to their advanced skin safe technology, I now feel confident shaving my boys. For my boys. This upgrading upgraded trimmer includes a multi-function on-off switch that can engage a travel lock. It also gives you the ability to turn the 4000K LED spotlight on and off when needed for a more precise shave. The Lawnmower 4.0 even allows you to customize your trim through additional guard lengths with sizes 1 to 4. Did I mention wireless charging? The new wireless charging system uses electromagnetic induction, which can help the battery length last even longer. Men, if you've been shaving with the same nut trimmer on your face, you've been doing it wrong. No person wants to end up with pubes in their mouth. It's time to get your own ball, hair, and body trimmer with Manscaped to make me time the best time and enhance your confidence with some nice smooth boys. Get 20% off plus free shipping with the code SPN20 at manscaped.com. Your balls will thank you. Get 20% off plus free shipping with the code SPN20 at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use the code SPN20. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. All right. Well, with that, why don't we get into today's episode? Yeah, let's do it. Uh, the then is really just reviewing the Halloween episode. I mean, that's the it's it's really the previous episode is mostly what it's doing here. It is, and it's funny. Like technically, some of these threads get touched on a bit in this episode, but like really, it's not much. About they make them. it feel like. This now is part two. Yeah. But it's 100% it's not, not. Not. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they were just like, I don't know, man. This is just what happened last, last week. <laughs> like, Yeah. Although I do think it starts with the first clip is from an earlier app. It's from like episode three or something. And it's the like, I pulled you out of hell. Yes. I can throw you right back in. Yeah. So yeah. The, which is the first thing they sort of talk about. But then they just yeah. leave it sort of behind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's sort of the only real line, through line here is Dean in hell and what he remembers. But we get, yeah, we get yeah, Uriel yeah. telling Sam, it's like, as soon as you're not fucking yeah. useful, I'm going to turn you to dust. Yeah. <laughs> turn you to dust. Yeah. Like Dark Side. Yeah. He says that. It's Do weird. you know Dark Side? Yeah. <laughs> you know, Supernatural and uh, DC have a lot First of- appeared in Superman's yeah. <laughs> pal Jimmy Olsen in the first. Still insane that that's <laughs> true. So we go to the now. Uh, we have an invisible being lurking around a woman. Yeah, a pretty good. Like she, I mean, it's not just lurking around a woman. She's in the shower. Yes, very classic horror setup. Yes. Since Psycho, I would say the shower horror thing is very classic. Well, yeah, and that's... specifically like the invisible man thing with the sh- shower scene has been done a few times too. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm thinking of like Hollow Man definitely has a shower thing, doesn't it? Yeah. You know, like, because you get the steam in that, so you could, and they do it in this episode. Yeah. You see the hand on it, but you don't see the hand. Did like, you see the, uh, did you watch that Invisible Man movie, the new one? Oh, fuck. So scary. So good. It was like, I had to watch it in parts. <laughs> I was like, no. Too much. God, that, just that moment, like, in the attic where she, like, dumps the paint or whatever, oh, and yeah. he's just there, and you're like, ah, no. <laughs> so funny. Uh, I watched Candyman last night. Oh, is it good? Like it's, the new one? It's very good. It's, yeah? It's it's definitely scary, but it's very good for sure. I don't know if I can handle it. My wife was just like, this is fine. And I'm like, this is terrifying. <laughs> I mean, what does scare your wife? I, well, that was a conversation we've been having lately because she's been playing some of those scary games. It's just like, yeah, this is fine. It's... <sighs> All the games that we were like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Look up scaredy guys on YouTube. So this a woman Candace is uh at the Cascade Women's Fitness Center yeah. and uh, she's taking a, a shower she gets out and she throws her towel to the wall and it uh ends up accidentally draping over this invisible figure yeah and and the invisible figure says like hello mrs <laughs> hi mrs anderson yeah. or whatever her name is hello mrs anderson <laughs> <laughs> 
shower is a virus. <laughs> <laughs> it's really hard not to do. I'm a terrorist. <laughs> I know. Yeah, They're yeah. very close, actually. Yeah. yeah. Hello, Mrs. Terrorist. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Mrs. Anderson. I'm going to enjoy watching you shower, Mrs. Yeah. Anderson. The stench of it. <laughs> oh, no. That, we made that so much creepier. <laughs> oh, God. Agent Smith watching people shower. Pervert Smith. <laughs> Pervert yeah. Smith. <laughs> <laughs> Some part of you imprinted onto me, I jerked off on yeah. some part of you. <laughs> I don't exactly know what happened, yeah. Mrs. Anderson. <laughs> yeah, take out your neighbor's yeah. garbage, if you know what I mean. Yeah. I've seen it. Your body, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Living two lives, one in a dungeon. What? <laughs> 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 Candace screams because of the oh. awkward greeting that she receives from the invisible figure. Elsewhere, over shots, Dean rebuffs Sam's questions about remembering hell. Yeah. And flat out denies uh, uh, that he can remember it at all. Yeah. Even I though mean, we know otherwise. We got, so, this is This is a problem with Supernatural. <laughs> and I feel like what balances it out in seasons four and five is yeah. just how fucking good all the like or so many of the episodes are. Yes. Shouldn't say all, but yes, many of the episodes are in the general arc of the mm -hmm. show is so good in these couple of seasons that it kind of balances it out. But this is where we start getting into the thick of isn't this the thing you were just yelling at the other brother about last week? Yes. And then they just flip it. Or they and, pretend like they never had the progress and, that they got. Yeah, literally. I mean, spoiler alert. You're in for a few seasons of this. Yes. That's, <laughs> it is a problem. It becomes a real problem. Um, it really bogs the show down eventually, but not yet because yes. we're riding on some relative quality Total. narrative arcs. They, they don't have enough as soon time. As, as soon as that kind of dissipates a bit, then you go like, mm. They don't have enough time to like smoking man these episodes because there's just too much good content in them. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, Th there's a funny thing that happens is they keep continually getting interrupted by this overzealous waiter who like this guy's yes. really making a meal out of his like small role great job but like all he's doing is basically just like telling them about what sort of uh deals there are telling them about this really great ice cream and like script wise I mean, there's some fun to it but he's, he's really making a meal out of it it's they're very clearly riffing on the office space yes, like pieces of flair totally, yeah. whatever restaurant i mean that's just a real thing what is that restaurant is it though is it tgif maybe or no it's um bennigan's bennigan's yes is, is that one yeah that's the one yeah at any rate uh he like very clearly riffing on that idea of like the sort of insufferable like corporate makes us happy yes. kind of shit like which is funny because it's not really connected to anything. No, you th I thought it would be, but it's really not. Because, yeah, I mean, this is a town where people are getting their w wishes granted. Yeah. And you'd think maybe, like, they'd be like, oh, this guy just, like, wished he didn't hate his job. Yes. And then it became that. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. But it's, it's it's just not connected. It's just in there. I guess maybe someone likes Office Space. They wanted to riff on it's it. It's funny. Or... Yeah. It is a kind of funny. It's just, it is, it's just odd. It's just kind of. It doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> I think part of it is also just like that guy does a really good job with that. Yeah. And so it's memorable. Yeah, totally. And he's got the exact opposite energy of Sam and Dean's conversation. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And I like that. Is there's a certain point where they're just like, dude, seriously? It's kind of impressive restraint, I would say, actually, on the part of Dean. Because yeah. they're just like, no, we're good. Yeah. He's not just saying, like, listen. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. You tell all those goddamn pins on your suspenders to get the fuck away from my food. <laughs> so funny. Uh, we now go to number one, Lucky Chins, a restaurant in Concrete, Washington. That's right. Uh, so a bit of about the Lucky Chins restaurant shots, because they were all sort of done on the same day, even though we go back here a few times. Right. Jared Padalecki said that during the day of filming of the scenes in the Chinese restaurant, he was suffering from a very from very bad food poisoning. Uh, so most of what we see on the screen was filmed by Jensen alone, with Jared coming in and doing all of his coverage at the end of the day. Really? Yeah, so interesting. fun thing to think about while you're watching that. Uh, so they just put like a wig on a mop and <laughs> sat it like across from... Does the same, same level of acting. 
Wow. <laughs> never getting him as a guest. Never. Never. He gets better. It gets better. <laughs> it gets better. <laughs> We're here to talk about some trauma today. Yeah. Jared's acting. It gets better. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Should be weaponizing that. Uh, Candace tells Sam about her ghostly encounter for his book, tentatively titled Supernatural. You're going to have a problem there, Sam. Uh, you, you, uh, that's already... Yeah, it's already uh, copywritten. Yeah, well, yeah, Somebody else might already be doing uh, it. Might be coming up. Oh. Um, but it is. This is kind of funny. It's the first time we've seen this cover. We've seen like the journalist thing yeah, I think, yeah. before, and we've seen obviously all sorts of officials, and they do that in this episode too. I think this is the first time we've just seen like, yeah, I'm just writing a book about ghosts. But yeah, I, I guess think... because there's no good way to like quote unquote get a story about ghosts. Yeah, typically, you know what I mean? Like, without being like reporters, sometimes the thing that they do with that, like, even with like the mystery spot, like, that's something you could have been doing a book about, but they always sort of lean towards writing. Uh, yeah, uh, it's uh, funny too, though, because this woman who had a legitimately scary experience for her is also like kind of flippant about it and like trying to capitalize on it. She's like, I've always been like kind of like a, like a sensitive, yes. Or and like shit like that. And as she she talks about like eventually she's like, Oh yeah, when you, <coughs> I fell down the stairs, it goes, You fell, you weren't pushed. And she goes, Uh like it's so like so she's making shit. She was legitimately scared, but also like making shit up. Well, yeah, it, well, there's even a point where Sam's like, It did it try to did it even try to hurt you? And she's like, It's a ghost. She, she's like, I'm lucky to be alive. Yeah, yeah. And it's also like, the ghost helped me up when I fell. Yeah, it kept calling me like Mrs. Anderson yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um but rather than harming her the spirit knew her name and helped her up when she fell begging her not to tell its mom (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah please mrs anderson do not tell my mother (laughs) please don't call the train man mrs anderson Isn't the Oracle the mom? Yeah, I guess. Please don't call the Oracle. Yeah. But the Oracle doesn't like tell the agents what to do. But Smith literally calls her mom. Oh, does she? Oh. Because the architect in the second movie oh, says, that's like, right. if Jesus I am the father of the Matrix, she is undoubtedly its mother. Oh, my God. And okay. then in the third movie, when he goes to yeah. like copy paste her, yes. uh, she goes Christ. like, hello, mom, or something, <laughs> something weird, creepy like that. <laughs> Hello, mommy. <laughs> Ooh, I've been oh, a bad Smith. I'm gonna paste you. <laughs> oh, no. oh no! I'm caught in the computer dryer. God, I'm stuck in the computer dryer. <laughs> Step program. Oh, well, there's two that are twins. Uh oh. Oh Jesus Christ! What a, it's what a weird. <laughs> what a weird tangent. What an insane tangent. It's, it's this show plus Matrix plus Step Plus Board. board. <laughs> uh, so Dean is reading the local newspaper on the stairs of the fitness center. Headline saying local man wins $168 million lottery. Dean finds no EMF at the site. Uh, but he and Sam do come across a man claiming to have been attacked by Bigfoot. A well-known he, hoax. Yeah. He, I like that you put that in there. As opposed to the other stuff we talk about on Well, no. Show. I mean, a well-known hoax. Listen, there are definitely but not on call out there. But no, no. But in Supernatural. But Bigfoot, well-known hoax. I, in Supernatural, it's a well-known hoax. Like, they even say, like, all hunters know that this it is, is That is a... It is funny where they go to split hairs. When they decide to, yeah. like... Because like, the other thing that's a huge hoax, UFOs. Yes. In Supernatural, they're like, nope, we're alone in the universe. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> I do always think it's funny because it's like, it is putting a bit of, like, bumpers on them. Because it's like, okay, well, you can't use these now. A like, show that famously cannot be restrained. Yeah. It does actually have some internal rules. It's... You know, like... It's uh, it is kind of funny. They call it Bigfoot. Well, that's nah, stupid. Yeah, very funny. Yeah, um, it's an insect creature, clearly. <laughs> but they do go into the woods, but they can't explain the huge tracks that they find there, which leads to a raided 
liquor store. Yeah, the, it leads. Yeah, it leads to this liquor store that also has like nudie mags. And yes, shit it's in all it. broken liquor bottles everywhere, and it's all been like cleaned out. Yes, um, and Dean is like so Bigfoot came in for booze and porno mags he makes some comment about being like a backwoods de Coveney. yes <laughs> like weirdly making light of the alcoholism and sex addiction that, yeah of david de Coveney. a little bit yeah i mean always x-files reference i mean this is yes. not a specific x-files reference just an actor that was on x-files yeah but close enough uh, it does feel like maybe like too comfortable it's yes. like, oh, basically, these shows are like spiritual siblings, so like we can make fun of his addiction. We could say it. We could say it. It's kind of funny, though. That is really funny. Um, Probably so shouldn't be, but it is a little. We see a little girl on a bike, Audrey Elmer, dropping off a box full of alcohol and porn along with a sorry note. Yeah, uh, an issue of Busty Asian Beauties magazine falls out the back of this like milk crate she's biking with. Yes. Um, <laughs> which yeah yeah dean ob- immediately clocks obviously <laughs> it's just so silly so dean and sam decide to follow her home when they're going to audrey's house dean asks if this is a harry and the hendersons deal uh harry and the hendersons was a 1987 film uh which uh was filmed in index washington while this episode is set in concrete washington concrete washington is also the town in which the movie uh this boy's life from 1993 takes place sorry i'm just i'm thinking about this sure but we know the busty asian beauties <laughs> okay is a website yes because dean yeah has been got on there before yes. but it's also a magazine could have been a magazine first i guess and then it has a website yeah because i was thinking like this is this like getting an issue of like brazzers magazine <laughs> <laughs> it's like <laughs> No, I like, think it's more of like going to like... I got Pornhub Magazine. I got yeah, no, I think it's like, more of like a Hustler's website. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Probably what it is. I mean, it's a digital age. They got to modernize. I bet Playboy has like a pretty yeah. vast we- website. We now. pivoted to video because of Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> People don't look at porn on Facebook. Like what? <laughs> they... Huh? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Uh, the boys are surprised when she tells them that her teddy bear is responsible for all of the damage. <laughs> yeah. Y- yeah. And so they. Okay. Th- I mean, <laughs> you can even see them yeah. like as characters uncomfortable with yes. this. They have to be like, we're teddy bear doctors. Can we come into your yeah. house, little girl? <laughs> you can kind of see them being like, oh, I hate. No, not like this. this They're like, are your wrong. parents home? Yeah. Nope. It- all right, um, this is this looks bad. Yeah, it, it doesn't look great. No, the girl's teddy is big, real, and can talk, and it's in the middle of an existential crisis. Yeah, hold up like, in the TV room, crying at news reports. Yeah, it's like watching horrible things on the news. He goes, "Why? Why am I here?" And she goes, "For tea parties." And he goes, "Tea parties? Is that all there is?" <laughs> so funny. This scene, he's, he's having like a full mental breakdown. It's like, it's like a slight, it's actually not less silly than like Forky in uh, Toy Story yes. 4. Being like, why is this? Why am I real? Why Why do I exist? Yeah. I fucking love it. The first time I saw this, it blew my mind. I yes. couldn't believe how funny this and was. And then a few minutes later, it blew the bear's I mean, mind. yeah, I, what they do with this bear, <laughs> like insane. It is um, a very funny moment. Uh, they just—it's one of the craziest things I think this show has ever done. A giant stuffed teddy bear like, coming to life, and then exi- having an existential existential crisis. Existential crisis drinking its like sorrows away. Like they could have just mm-hmm. the the one beat is like the teddy bear comes to life and maybe it's unhappy, but then to have it like an ex- existential crisis, it reads no- nudie mags and like drinks. Like yeah, it's and the the girl is like, I just wanted my teddy to come to life, but now he's always sad. And he smells like the bus. Yeah. <laughs> um, which is like, let's not knock public transportation. But, yeah, yeah. But it's, yeah. It's hilarious. It, 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 she, this little girl is very funny. It, it's, she, does, she does a good job in this, in this episode. She's really good. She's a real riot. So Michael Teagan 
voices Teddy, the suicidal teddy bear. He played pre he previously played a teacher in the episode Supernatural Bloody Mary. That's right. Uh, Audrey's Teddy also makes an appearance in the Supernatural short that I'm going to show you right now. Oh, a short. Yes. A viral video that the team of Supernatural did. That's fun. I think you'll enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> He's in the corner right there. <laughs> That's very cute. Remember the Harlem Shake? I do. Yeah, if you look up the Supernatural Shake, that's how you'll find that video. That's very cute. Um, I, I love like that, that they did that. I was just like, God, was that that long ago? Oh, yeah. Jesus. Crazy, eh? Um, so Audrey tells Sam and Dean that she wished for him at the Wishing Well at the Lucky Chins restaurant that they've yeah. been to before. Uh, they visit the restaurant, and Dean tests the well by wishing for a sandwich. Dean's uh, wish immediately comes true as they realize it works. Yeah, guy shows up with a sandwich. It's very good. Perfect for Dean. And then they're just sitting there. Also, like, they're just sitting there like no one's attempted to order anything. So yes. the guy comes over and goes, like, you can't bring outside food in here, obviously. And Dean immediately is like, yeah, I'm a health inspector yeah. he has to like he has to like fiddle find, with other find fake the, ideas yeah find the health inspector one um, he's like you got rats yeah and so they, they have to clear the restaurant out and drain the fountain I'm not gonna lie there was a little moment where I was I was worried the episode was going racist oh. because the guy comes over and says you can't bring outside food in here and he goes I'm sure not gonna eat anything served here and I was oh, like is he gonna no. make some sort of like dog yeah meat, yeah like fucking joke and then he was like oh, health inspector you have rats and i was like whoo okay yeah Phew. skirted that one Phew. because uh, earlier in the episode too like the reason they go to the town is because dean is like uh, oh yeah ghost showers women well, these women need to be saved i let's go <laughs> yeah i don't i don't love that part <laughs> dirtbag dean yep hashtag dirtbag dean dean asks uh, Sam, if he's tempted to make a wish to reset his life so that he can be normal again. And Sam's a fucking bummer about it. He's like, I'd get Lilith's head on a plate, bloody. And Dean's like, Dad, I got a sandwich. <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> Jesus. They notice an ancient coin at the bottom of the fountain, which refuses to budge. Dean goes on research duty, which is like the wrong person to do that, while Sam heads to the Women's Health Center. I mean, probably the right move. Yeah, that's why. Th that is the reason you put Dean on research. That's true. Duty. Yeah, yeah. They're like, you can't. No, man. Look, this show won't be able to recover from this. Uh, who goes to scold the pervy teen who wished for invisibility. Here's the bit. Here's the thing, though. Yeah. Sam catches the Dirt. invisible kid. Yeah. But Sam is also in the women's change room, like yes. in the washroom. But like, I think the woman in there doesn't know he's there. Oh. Because she turns around and is just shocked by the scenario. Yeah. Because he just catches the kid. But then she turns around and goes, ah, and runs away. So it's like Sam also snuck up on her. Yeah. It's, we'll talk about it more and towards the end, especially. It's not like, it's not like nothing problematic happens. It's just like, it's one of those things where it's like, what was Sam's cover? Yes. You know what I mean? Like, they're usually so good about I'm it. I'm writing a book. Inspector, I'm a health yeah. inspector. Yeah. yeah. Uh, FBI, female body inspector. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> I'm glad I never have one of those shirts. <laughs> I did at one point not have that shirt, but I had <laughs> the one with the arrows. Oh, yeah. Like, uh, like, the guns, the rocket. Oh, like, I had I had the man, the legend. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. It was my older brother's shirt. The man, the legend is a classic one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, the the kid should be way more punished than just being like, "Hey, you get out of here, you scamp! Boys will be boys." Like, it's yeah. not okay. Yeah. Like, you wish for invisibility, and you've been like just staring at showering women. Yeah, it's really it's, not okay. It's very not okay. And, but the episode's like, ah, uh, it's not what this episode's about. I don't know why we put this in here. Yes. <laughs> don't worry. We'll make it up with a worse thing soon. Back at the hotel, Sam finds Dean being sick in the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. The wishes, it turns out, turn bad. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. Dean's like, the, the, the wishes turn bad, man. <laughs> they turn bad. The coin is cursed. It depicted Tiamat 
the Babylonian serpent deity uh, of primordial chaos. And it has uh, been known to wipe entire towns off the map with the trouble it causes. Yeah. Oh boy. It's not like... It's funny, though, because it is interesting that it is more about... Because it's this Tiamat thing, it's more about chaos. Yes. Because it like a monkey's paw thing would be like, you order the sandwich... And it kills you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like you wish for invisibility yeah, yeah, yeah. and then like you could never be visible again. Yeah, yeah. It's not really that. It's just like, yeah, they, they go bad, but like it's fine for the most. Like no one yeah. gets like killed. Well, almost no one gets killed. It's or less about punishing the people who make the wish and more about giving people what they want to a point, but having it be these extreme things that are not what you wished for, like, or not, or you didn't, like, it's that, it's that. It's almost like exactly what you wished for. Yeah, you know, like the, the be careful paw, what you wish the for. The monkey's paw thing always feels like, a, like the monkey's paw is like searching for a way to yeah, fuck you, yeah, 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 whereas yeah. this is just like, no, you wished for it and like shit happens. But like, like <laughs> there's reality of your wishes. That's a careful what you wish for thing, right? I think that's what like, this I, is. The way I see it is like Dean wished for a sandwich and the sandwich shop in town is a place where people get food poisoning. Yes. It's not his sandwich. Yes. It's just like you wish for a sandwich. We got you a sandwich. It's just like. <laughs> also, if you if, if if someone randomly hands you a sandwich out of nowhere that you didn't ask for, it's probably not okay. If uh, you... <laughs> am I? Am I? You gotta stop eating that street food, man. And by that I mean food you literally find on the street. food yeah. I find on the street. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but also, like, yeah, if you make a bear come to life, it's probably not gonna like be okay with its life because it's not gonna understand why it exists. Like, it ma- makes sense. Like, it's more of like the reality of wishes more than like yes. punishing you for them. Yeah, totally. So the only way to stop it is to find the first wisher, the one person capable of removing the coin and turning off the well. Yeah, because they try to take it out. They use like a crowbar. It breaks yeah, the yeah. crowbar. Yeah, it's like, yeah. oh shit, it's magic. Yes. <gasps> like, they, yeah, there's not. They are not the ones who can do it. So they have to find. They the have first to do person. a bunch of bullshit too, because they've cleared out the restaurant so they can try and like, yeah, deal yeah. with this thing. And the guy's like, "You're gonna break my fountain." And Sam's like, "I don't want to slap you with a forty-six eleven, yeah. but I will." <laughs> And even he kind of looks at Dean going, like, I don't fucking know. Oh my god, is that is that a, is that a human sock in the real world, like in a monster <laughs> world? <laughs> so back at back to, <laughs> I just got that the now. Monsters Inc. thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, back to Audrey's bipolar Teddy. It tried to suicide with a shotgun, but l- fails to lose its. Life. Sorry, did you just say it tried to suicide? Yeah, it tried to. We're just, it's just a verb. I mean, couldn't it be? You commit suicide. It is a you thing. Com- you commit suicide. Yeah. So the you, verb is committing. Yeah, but you can and just. You're committing the thing. Yeah, but if you. But to suicide, I suicide, you suicide. Yeah. We all scream for suicide. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> Maybe we do. Yeah. It, Maybe we're it, not so different, you. <laughs> Yeah, we both really Suicide. want to die. Uh, weird turn for me. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a funny, it's a funny moment because at first you're like, oh Jesus, because you is, see the you, you see, see it, the do rifle it. and it's like it's dark as shit and the camera pans away and you, you see, see the, like the puff of yeah, like oh stuffing. My God. And you're like, holy shit, this episode took a very dark turn. It is like a monkey's yeah. paw, and then it just pans back. And the bear's like, why? Because it exists through magic. Because he's a teddy bear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) It exists through magic, not through, like, it's a biological entity. So by shooting itself, it's like, well, it doesn't have a brain. But also by that logic, it's been drinking a bunch of beers, so it just has, like, beer-soaked stuffing on the inside of it. Yes. (laughs) So funny. It's just a big, wet, depressed teddy bear. Oh, God. It's wet from the inside out. Ew. Yeah. After I'm done. (laughs) Oh no. Oh no. We got that fresh hole. Oh no. Oh, no. Dean it's wakes go fuck that teddy bear. Yep. Uh, uh Dean wakes from a fitful nap dreaming of hell. Sam confronts yes. him about the nightmares and his increasing drinking. And Dean is like, nothing. Yeah. He throws a Mickey on the bed and goes like, I'm not you you're drinking. Yes. That's basically it. And he basically, yeah, just diverts the conversation and, de- and deduces that the first wisher, Wesley Mondale, a nerdy guy, announces his surprise engagement to the beautiful Hope. Yeah, because they're like, how are we su- supposed to find the first wisher? 
<laughs> yeah. And then they find this like they're, month it, old <sighs> engagement article. Yeah. And, like when they're at the restaurant, Sam is like, that looks like a, it's a wish. And he's like, it's definitely a wish. That fucking nerd yeah. with that dime. Yeah. Not great. She's an absolute dime piece, and he's a fucking four eyes. Yeah. So you know that's magic. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> uh, Dean Winchester, investigator. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Anita Brown, the actress who plays Hope, also plays Lindsay in season one episode Supernatural Skin. Yes. In 2005. Yeah, she right, also yeah. appeared in the episode Dark Angel from 2000. Oh. Uh, the epi- an ep- in an episode of that show, uh, which also starred Supernatural Jensen Ackles. Oh, Jensen Ackles was on Dark Angel? Yeah, yeah. I still never watched that. I, I watched it when it came out, uh, but yeah. I did. I maybe only watched like three or four episodes. But hmm. uh, we go back to Wes's house. Uh, where he he is sort of dealing with the fact that he got what he wished for. Yeah, we sort of get we I, I mean we kind of learn it through this scene and in the next scene. What he wished for was that Hope would love him more than anything, and that's all she's doing. So she's like he's like napping, and she wakes him up, and she's like, "I thought you'd want a snack, but it's like a whole chicken yeah, and yeah, like, yeah, yeah. and you can see even she's kind of like." He's like, you didn't have to do this. She's like, I had to. I love you more than I any- love you more than anything, more than life. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, it's- like and he's kinda like, it's cool, but like I want you to do things that you did before that yeah. you like. And she's like, But I love you. And he's yeah, like, Yeah, yeah I- okay, but <laughs> like even he is like easy. No, not like this is too much. Here's I need you to thing. have your own inner life. It's weird and kind of funny, but the more that I think about it, the more it really bugs me. Bugs me. The rapiness of this whole thing. Right. I mean, it, yes. I, I mean, yes. It, it's it's really disturbing. And the more times I've seen this, the I more the, it upsets I me. I think the, yeah. I mean, listen, you are right. Conceptually, yes. what he has done here is just like rob her of agency. Yes. What the episode is pretty smart about yes. is, generally speaking, it's not overly sexual the way they're they, depicted. They have and a- the t- couple of times that it it is where, like, she's kissing him or whatever, yeah, yeah, he's yeah. kind of going like, yeah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. And, and that's the way I think they make you not think too much about yes. it is he's like oh well i mean this is too much even for him yeah and then you don't go like wait a minute what about when it wasn't too much y- exactly like, like theoretically you can assume you you could you could go maybe they haven't done anything but it seems pretty unlikely and i mean i don't want to give up the goat entirely yes. but like at the end of the episode yeah. the other way they kind of wow well, uh, they don't work or i shouldn't call it a workaround because yeah. it doesn't fix it but the way they ch- i think temper it in terms of like we don't want people to focus on this yes is that she goes back to not knowing who he is yes which in a way is worse yes but if they didn't do that she would have to be like wait a minute yes for the last month which maybe and they're like we can't have that have her just forget I mean, it's way worse, right? Because he's taken even more advantage of her. Because then it's like, but oh, that's the did... way they don't have to have that conversation. Yes. Which sort of makes it worse to me. I, I agree, but that's the way the episode is like trying to steer you away from thinking sure. about this thing. Sure. Um, as Wes is waking up, what in front of the TV? Uh, the black and white credits roll on the TV, which appears to be, as we said from the beginning of the episode, the song from Captain Blood, nineteen thirty-five, starring Errol Flynn. That's right. Uh, when talking to Wes, Dean says that they're also FBI and on Thursdays were teddy bear doctors, referencing to what they were at, the, uh, at Audrey's house. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but it also refers to the fact that the show aired on Thursdays, uh, I guess, in, in season four. Well, I mean, it's just it's the day, day that it's they... It's just that they said the day that... Yeah, but I mean, it's it's with. enough of a connection to, like, they, to choose a day, and that's when the show airs. Yeah, so, I guess. So it's, it is a reference, I would assume, to it. Like, why not? Why, why not? Yeah, I mean, I, I guess. So <laughs> that... Uh, 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 but we find out that 
uh, from Wes, he confesses that this is uh, uh, his grandfather's coin. It was given to him while he was a soldier in, uh, well, uh, the grandfather found it while he was a soldier in North Africa in World War II. Yes. Uh, but he told Wes to never use it. Now that it's working, Wes is reluctant to undo his wish, but Sam and Dean do convince him with some helpful threats. Uh, yeah. Uh, when in doubt. Yeah. Tell them they're going to fucking kill him. I think yeah. I actually, I did notice, it. I mean, it didn't bug me, but I did notice it more in this episode than I normally do. That, like, Sam is like, you'll deal with us. Yeah. It's like, Sam is normally the one that's like, listen, like, we'll work through this. He, like, like, we're missing, like, the attempt. Yes. Technically, this conversation happens, but it happens, like, off camera. Yeah. Because later when they're in the car, he's like, where's this chaos you're telling me about? Like, so they've obviously talked to him about it, but it's weird in the scene that it just feels like they go directly that Sam to isn't direct. like I need to tell you about yes. this thing. He goes like Mister Fist over here is going <laughs> to tell your face not to. <laughs> it's like not really like a Sam move. No, it isn't. It's true. Um, so shouldn't have called him Mister Fist. <laughs> uh oh, Mister Fist. <laughs> I'd like to share a revelation I've had during my time here. <laughs> Did you look up? Yeah, I was, I was like, I don't know. We'll... <laughs> That's incredible. Uh, near the well, they see Todd, a small kid with super strength terrorizing a group of local bullies. Yes. I fucking love this. He like... <laughs> He's... Because earlier in the episode, you see this kid being chased around by a group of kids, and yeah. and Dean even does a, 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 he even does like a run Forrest run. Yes, yeah. From Forrest Gump, yeah, uh, he teases him. Yeah, which yeah, is but he funny. basically is like, yeah, this kid's getting bullied, right? Like, but yeah, and then we like this kid like tips his fucking SUV over. <laughs> These kids like hide inside of an SUV <laughs> to try to get away from him, and he like yeah, he literally flips the thing on its side. <laughs> So funny. And he screams, kneel before Todd. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so after the uh, formally Reference bullied... to Superman 2. Yes, exactly. So uh, this is referring to the Kryptonian general Zod that is responsible for the destruction of Krypton in the Superman universe. And you... Well, oh, I wish you didn't say in the Superman universe because it kind of sounded like you were talking about it like it was real. Oh, no. <laughs> He's obviously referencing General Zod. Yeah. The... <laughs> yeah, yeah Kryptonian yeah. general. We all remember that. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah. In the movie, it's kneel before Zod. Yeah. yeah. So... Dean tries to talk to him, but gets beaten up for his troubles. Yeah, it's pretty funny. The kid, uh, like, uppercuts him into a tree. Yeah, Dean says to the little boy, uh, to Todd, uh, with great power comes great and is caught off before saying responsibility. Uh, yeah. Which is a, obviously a Spider-Man reference, which is kind of funny because Ted Raimi exactly. uh, is is Wes is like the main guy in this episode. Yeah, and the line was used in Sam Raimi's the the version of Spider-Man that that when this aired was the only version that they had in a movie. So yes, at it was the time, yeah, yeah, it was right. his brother Ted Raimi's brother Wes's brother in real life. Uh, uh, so funny, love that. Uh, at the restaurant, uh, a lightning bolt strikes Sam. Yeah, yeah, and this is what I mean when I say what what I was saying at the beginning. Yeah, with. Even when it's serious, this episode plays everything silly. Like, the cloud literally, like, sneaks up. <laughs> like, if you watch the scene, you see the cloud, like, come from the distance. <laughs> but, like, zoop, So <laughs> like, funny. It's, it's pretty funny. It's like a Looney Tunes thing. And Sam just fucking drops dead. Um, Sam is wished to death by Hope. Uh, but it is resurrected when Wes eventually takes the coin. Yeah, because Hope well. is like, I had to do it. Because she overhears them at the house yeah. talk about the coin and stuff like that. But she's still under the influence of the wish and going, I love it more than anything. I can't have this get yeah. taken away from me. What's interesting, though, is that this is one of the few episodes there's no death. This is the one death, but it actually isn't. It's not permanent. Yeah, so. it gets undone So when he finally removes the... The coin from the well. I got to say, I actually kind of like the effect of him taking the coin out of the well. Like, they, the way it's shot the, and the way they, you know, sound and all the kind of stuff. It, they really make it, like, like the coin is heavy. You know, like, the one ring is yeah. heavy. Like, you get this real sense of, like, you're not just lifting a coin There's out a of the water. It's, it. like, Removing, all the magic, all the yeah. energy of what's been put out into the universe is being, you're like... detaching it from yeah, the Yeah, there's something kind of, like... I think it's very well done. It's I, a good I, little moment. And I, 
it just it's a nice detail i think totally yeah uh so a, a fun thing about the lightning bolt, which is like, although Sam often wears biker boots like Dean does, right? Uh, when he was struck by lightning and flew out of his shoes, which is hilarious. Yeah. Uh, they were uh, clearly Puma suede trainers with white stripes, the same sh- uh, shoe Sam lost on Bad Day in Black Rock. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. So, when, so he lost them again. Yeah. So funny. Really, really like that. That's that's cute. I enjoy that. But as because uh, Wes removes the coin now, as we said before, Hope doesn't even remember Wes's name. Yeah. You see Todd lose his powers. <laughs> yeah. He kind of looks at his hands like <laughs> like the way Zod does in Superman yeah. 2. He's like, <laughs> what did you do to me? <laughs> like, he doesn't say that, but it's kind of like... I don't think it's deliberate, but it made. I just think it's funny. <laughs> Ultimate power gone. Yeah, no, so funny. But yeah, and then Hope like turns to Wes and goes, "Do I know you?" Yeah, which again makes it worse. Is worse. Yeah, but that's the episode being like, "Don't think about it. Don't talk about it." Yeah, <laughs> didn't happen, which is worse. <laughs> yeah, because also it's been a month. Yeah, it's 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 really not okay. It's yeah yeah. Ah, oh, man, that doesn't hold up to scrutiny at all. I know. Remember that thing you said downstairs before we came out I here? know. I'm like, yeah, I know. I'm always like, man, I like this episode. Then we talk about it. And I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, uh, a, dedect- uh, je- a dejected West leaves Sam with a coin. Yeah. Later, Sam meets Dean at the pier. Yeah, he says he melted. I don't want to wait for my life to be over. Don't know. I don't know. It's Piers. That's what makes me think of Dawson's Creek. It makes you think of yeah. The right. Okay. Uh, the newspaper. I don't want a dean. Till I say it's good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's some more. <laughs> You're in love. <laughs> the uh. uh <laughs> <laughs> Sam's reading a newspaper, the Concrete Daily News that we saw earlier. Yeah. Um, and there's a banner uh, uh, printed at the top. It says final edition, fi- uh, uh, 50 cents, 75 cent coin, $1 outside the simil- city limits. And the headline saying, winning lottery ticket, fake counterfeit. Yeah. George Newman claimed winnings with a fake ticket. George, uh, uh, so that that we like, at the beginning yeah. saw that this guy had won all his money. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is another thing that got uh, uh, removed because of what they did. Yeah. Yeah. And like uh, the little girl's parents are back from Bali. Yes. I guess her mom wished they were in Bali or yeah. something like that. So funny. But it's because like, you see this like woman with a sunburn yeah, yeah. and like everything. Yeah. It's, it's, um, you see the kid walking with her normal teddy bear, but it still has like a taped up <laughs> hole in its head. Which so is, good. So it like, so it didn't undo some stuff. Yes. Didn't like it's it, it, that stuff. It does happens. not bother me. It's, it's like it only undoes things for comedy. Yes. <laughs> Love it. Well, I actually don't think it it does it just stops things from happening. It doesn't undo anything. But it undoes the thing for hope. It just stopped it. But it, but but no no no. If it just stopped it She'd be like, I know who you are. I've lived in your house. We've been having sex for a month, but I do not love you. What the fuck? But it, uh, but, but like, but she goes back to as if it never happened. But what's funny is it undoes, but it, it, that whole thing. But I don't think it's, a, it's not setting it up like it never happened. It is. She doesn't know who he is. She doesn't go like, she doesn't go like, I know we live together, but what's your name? Well, no, she, she goes back to like, she doesn't know who he is. No, but I think the spell was like, I I wanted her to like know me and love me. And so the spell was knowing him and loving him. So now she, that's removed. So she no longer loves or knows him. Yeah, the, the, the wish is just, I want her to love me more than anything. But so I, if that ends, she should still know who he is. But it, there is a weird kind of like. And again, I think they only yeah it, they it, don't dwell on it because it, of how bad it is. It's only with her. Everyone else is just like, yeah, we know what's been happening, yes. and now it's done. Yes, I think they. But only, like, it's only with her because they're like, uh, don't think don't about it, don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah. it's like uh, that thing. Um, <laughs> so a fun thing about the lottery ticket winner, uh, George Newman, is actually the set direct uh, uh, decorator for Supernatural. Uh, and the photo in the paper is actually him. Oh, the, that's cute. The byline of the article credits Christopher Cooper, daily uh, staff writer. Chris Cooper is the show's prop uh, property master. Well, yeah, that's what you get to do when you're the props master. Yeah. You put your name in whatever you want. So funny. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Sam confirms that the coin has been melted down. Yes. Um, before they leave, Dean... He threw it into the mountain from whence it came. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, he was just he was just actually, took a quick jaunt to Mordor. <laughs> he was actually on the back of a boat and he went Mordor, Ooh. Oregon. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> You proud of yourself? Kind of. Yeah. Uh, before they leave, Dean confesses something. He's been lying to Sam. He does remember everything that happened to him in the pit. It's interesting because then Sam says, "Like, tell me about it." He goes, "No." Yeah. He's like, I'm not gonna lie to you, but I'm also not gonna tell you. Yeah. I remember everything, so I'm not lying. But like, I couldn't describe it to you. It was hell. Yeah. I like don't even have the words to describe. Do you what know how people, when people me. say the worst possible thing, they say hell. It's yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Imagine all of the worst things. Hell. Uh-huh. Yeah. Telling, talking about it is not going to help me. Yeah. Sam doesn't know what to say, so Dean slowly walks away, and Sam follows him. And that's yeah. the end of the episode. I did find... Um, I found this fun thing about the uh, the invisible kid. Oh, okay. Um, this is this is a bit that was like cut from the scene. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Cut from the scene with his teacher. Uh, okay. Mrs. Anderson. <laughs> did you know that the first shower was designed to be a perfect human shower? <laughs> where, where none were dirty, everyone could be clean. It was a disaster. No one would accept the shower. Entire boobs were lost. Some believe we lacked the Entire water what pressure. The water pressure to describe your perfect shower, but I believe that as a species, naked women define their reality through shower. What was lost? Entire boobs were lost. <laughs> That's what I thought you said. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You hear that, Mrs. Anderson? That is the sound of inevitability. It is the sound of your shower. <laughs> Goodbye, Mrs. Anderson. Don't tell my mom. <laughs> By that, I mean Oracle. The Oracle. <laughs> mom. Mommy. <laughs> Wow. I can't believe they cut that. What a good monologue. I know. It's like probably one of the best parts of the whole thing. But, Jeez. Yeah. Uh, well, before we talk about our reviews for this episode, we have a note from a fellow hunter. Hey, very nice. From Gabby, who says, hey, I just started listening to your podcast and I love it. I'm only on episode seven right now, but I already love listening to it. I listen on my way to school in the mornings and... <coughs> It's just fun to listen to you guys talk about the show and bring up things I never thought about, like Mr. Yamashiro's mirror store. Oh, man. <laughs> I hope he landed on his feet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you know what? I need to I need a clean break. I'm going to open Mr. Yamashiro's Fabergé eggs. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Yamashiro's delicate vases <laughs> yeah. on top of poles. Ink. Yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to thank you guys for brightening uh, not only my day, but the days of others. Keep up, keep it up. Oh, that's very nice. Thank you so much. Thank that's you. awesome. We really like that. So let's talk about our review of this episode. Oh, yeah. I guess it's that part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you go first. Uh, yeah. I Look, there is a lot of fun things in this uh, in this episode the bear suicide thing is fun i mean they are very flippant about a lot of really serious things you could even say that suicide is maybe not something that you should be flippant about but we are i mean you could say that yes <laughs> but i get more flippant. this is the wrong podcast maybe to do that um i think the real problem is it's again i mean it's a thing that we're gonna always bump up against uh, uh with um with stuff of this era which is Things that deal with like women's bodies and uh, rights and and things that were used for comedy for so long, it, forever. I mean, the the like what a trope of like the like the woman <coughs> is dreamed to do what you want. It's like yeah, sure that sounds like a fun yeah. thing from a man's perspective. I mean, even but... with the shower stuff, be like. Uh, it's a victimless crime. He wasn't touching them. That kid's living uh, the dream. And you're like, that's so fucked up. Yeah. It's like, what <laughs> it's it, so fucked up. What is it? Is it Porky's that also has the hole in the wall? Like, yeah, that yeah, kind yeah. of shit. It's like, it seems like it's like, it's one of those fucking bullshit boys will be boys things. Yeah. And 
I know that some people have given us shit online for like calling out this kind of stuff, but the only way that one, the only way things change is by making sure that people talk about the uh -huh. things that are bad and Absolutely. acknowledging that because otherwise they wouldn't have changed. I think the other thing is that we love this show, but it's important to recognize where its faults are because when it doesn't do those things and it gets better, it should be recognized for that as well. Because and, and it it does it does highlight part of why the show has longevity is yeah. that it does sometimes slowly, but yeah. it does learn from these things, do them less, and when it doesn't do them, you go like, wow, that like. In 15 seasons, they revisit some of these like yeah. ideas or monsters or concepts or yeah. narrative devices or whatever. And you go like, oh, they actually did it better. Yeah. And it's better because sometimes they have like it's shot better or whatever. And sometimes it's because they're like, well, we didn't bog it down with this crap. <laughs> like, yeah, that exactly. was unnecessary. And yeah, exactly. And so the I look in hindsight i can't really look past the stuff with west like it's 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 too much for me to just be flipping about it's ruined my enjoyment of this thing was it always that way i don't really know probably not um yep it's but you have to look at media with like high, with 2020 view right like i i think that you can acknowledge things for being good and, and components for being bad right i'm not saying this episode is fully lost because of it but it definitely is damaged because of that yeah because yeah it's yeah I, yeah yeah it's it, it's sort of an effect on it ted Raimi is a great actor and does a really good job on this and they they could have made it worse which is good like they they you I have to acknowledge for they could have shown a lot worse things in this but it still is bad and it still bugs me and so i can't like I have to, we're, we are looking at this with our eyes today, not with our eyes when we first saw this. And so I, I have, to, I'm, I, I, those things are bad enough to ruin the episode, but I'm not going to damage the entire episode because of a couple of bad things to have that happened. Right. So what so do you give it? I'm going to give it 2.75, uh, suicidal bear shotgun wounds. <laughs> wow. Um, I, I, I agree with what you said. Yeah. I, I think here's the real problem with yeah. it is that it's the, it's how they frame it, that it's been a month. Yes. And they're living together. Yeah. It, it, it means, could have just been instant. And, and this is this is where I'm going. Like the episode plays Wes as like a, oh, but now she's kind of like lost her inner life. It's like the stuff I liked about her. I just wanted her to like, which me. is good. And he's like, I want her to like things that aren't me too. And, and so like the episode is trying to put him up as like, uh, he just, he made a, a wish. He just wanted her to notice him and it fucked up, but it doesn't play when he's been sitting in it for a month. Yes. But if it was just that he was just another one of the wishes, even if he was like the first one and it happened a day ago, they're not living together, yeah. but she keeps coming around to drop stuff up and he's kind of getting weirded out by yes. it, but nothing's happened. They they we're planning to go on a date, but we haven't done it. You know what I mean? Like you do it. So like there hasn't been the implied transgression yet. Yes. And then you go like, he all he just made an innocent wish and it obviously fucked up and he fixed it and then I, most of the rest of it is fine you know what i mean like it's just because of the way it's set up and it's it is a problem you know like it's like it's weird i think the other piece of it too is that dean and sam give him shit for like you can't just get what you want and they're this close yeah. to it, but what they don't say is like you've like you absolutely like stole her soul. Yes. <laughs> like you've stolen her all of her choice, all of her agency. She isn't like even who she is. Yes. Like th they're this close to saying it, but it's only in the context of like it happened for you too easy. Yes. And it's like you're almost there. Th there's a you're, scene there's if, a cuz I think you could also keep stuff in the episode the way it was if sam and dean were like listen you're the monster this week because fuck you that's why and we're gonna make you take this fucking coin out yeah and like even if it's like sam uses his yeah. hand to make yeah. it like you know like you could have done it where it's you acknowledge that it's bad but they want to redeem this guy but they which... want this guy you know it's ted Raimi. like the, i think the episode's trying to have its cake and eat it too 
and it doesn't work. There's a there's a there's a scene where they're in the back of the car driving to the restaurant, and this guy like. Ted Raimi's character is a real fucking incel. He is, like he's yeah. literally like, you guys don't understand. You have it so easy. Women look at you. Yeah, and it's yeah. like, dude, like, yeah. All I wished for was a cheap airfare so I could get to the Capitol for January sixth. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it, it's it, it's it's the problem with it. It's like this, like you don't understand, and like women don't see me, and it's like. You are looking at the wrong the, part of the this. The ultimate problem here is that Wes, Ted Raimi's character, yeah. is a character, and Hope is a plot point. Yes. She's not a character. Yes. If she was a character, there would be a focus on this. We would be acknowledging these things. It would be more of a transgression. It would be that they're rescuing her yeah, from this. Yeah. But she's just a plot point. Yeah. Like the bear, like the super strength. Yeah. Things like that. Like she's a prop. In Wes's story, yes. this is a classic. Like she didn't get fridged, but it's the same principle as as uh, the women in refrigerators thing. Yeah, she didn't get killed to further a male character's story, but she's included only for that. Yes, exactly. She has no arc of her own. No, uh, and it's funny. Like even the teacher has no real arc of her own. It doesn't go anywhere because even when the wish comes, like gets undone. Even if we see the kid rematerialize, we don't hurt see her be like, you were invisible, you little shit. Yeah. We just go like, nah, he got away with it. He saw our cooch. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like we just. It's that boys will be boys bullshit thing that this episode is wrought with. And it, I, I'm not, I, I, I know people kind of harp on us for this. I still think this episode is fun, but it would be so much. Imagine how much more fun it would be yeah. if it just was like. If it did the same things, but it was just like, and what does that mean? Yes. That's what Supernatural does best usually yeah. is like, we've established this. What does that but mean? But if that, then what? Yes. You know, like it, yes. to use programming language or whatever. Love if it. this, then what? Yes. And in this episode, they go, if this, <laughs> and then Oops. leave it. And then leave it. Yeah. If this equals comedy. Yeah. If they did an if this, then what? Then Maybe that promo would be closer to it, where it's like, man, people are getting wishes, and it's bad. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like the, it's yeah. They just they don't they don't find the balance. <laughs> Agree. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of fun gags and shit like that, but some of this and stuff great just, acting, like the great acting. Todd is hilarious. Good characters, good moments. Yeah. I love like the again. I love the comedy of like the cloud sneaking up on Sam. Yeah, yeah. It's really funny. Like and, well, and the kid like chasing his bullies is funny. Neil like, before Todd is very funny. Yeah, like yeah. there's good shit in it. <laughs> the bear <laughs> thing is dark, <laughs> but it is funny. But that works in the supernatural yes. thing too. Like yeah, yeah. that. That works. Yeah. And also, uh, the bear is the bear's only victim. Yes. Right? And it's magic, and it's not real. And he and... doesn't actually kill himself. Yes, like, yes. You know what I mean? Um, uh, I I think I'll give this slightly more than you did sure. uh, while acknowledging all the same problems. I just, I do, it, I do like watching this episode. Yeah. I'd give this, I'll give this uh, three point. Two five tainted free sandwiches. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Well, that is our review. Maybe you want to let us know what your thoughts are on this episode. And is there any takeaways that you had had from uh, watching this? Yeah. Um. Maybe you can reach out to us. Do too. you have a magic wishing coin? Yeah. <laughs> Send it to us, please. <laughs> Actually, don't. Oh no, I, I don't. I don't know what will happen. We never saw what that the downfall of Todd's thing is. Oh, well, there isn't really one because when Todd loses his powers, then Dean says, like, play along. And Dean yeah, kind of backs yeah. up, and, like, so that the bullies can see, he goes, like, leave me alone, man, leave me alone. Think that he still has to it. To make the kids think he still has it. Yeah, yeah. Todd gives a little smile, and, like, the bullies will leave him alone now. I do want to know, like, Todd in, like, 20 years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's still. <laughs> It's just like fucking don't fuck he's with that guy. He's got a bunch of skin suits in his basement. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or like those like the, like how, like do the kids ever find out or they like they're like Todd you really need to do like this sports team. We know about your thing and he's just like I can't. Or they're like 
oh no, someone's trapped under this oh, rock. Oh no, Todd, we need your help. And he's like, uh, I can't. And they're just like, what the fuck, Todd? Yeah, you let my mom die. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna bully you. Yeah, but I can't. Oh no. <laughs> Todd gets like dejected and like <laughs> Jesus Christ tries to blown his brains out and f- uh, teddy bear fluff comes out. Todd was a bear the whole yeah. time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it works out. Uh, so why don't you reach out to us um, and you can send us a note uh, yeah. for a future episode or something we missed or something from the past or just like we got from Gabby today. You just want to say hello to us. Uh, you can reach out to us through our email. Ghostfacers podcast at gmail.com. As well as our various social media platforms. At Ghostfacers Pod on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. That's right. And don't forget to subscribe to our show so that you can get our episode automatically every single week. And while you're at it, why don't you give us a five star review like we got at the beginning of this episode? That's right. You can give them to us on Apple Podcasts mm-hmm. or on Facebook. I think Spotify yeah. has a ratings thing now. Yeah, they just popped up. Uh, so if you listen on Spotify, you could do that for us too. Yeah, um, it really lovely. helps out the show for yeah. sure. Uh, we got to come up with like a stretch goal. Sure. Mm. Uh, yeah. If we get like two more reviews, Richard, Richard will keep his nose out of my business. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> <laughs> we got to. <laughs> <laughs> got to get a stretch goal for you to get a supernatural tattoo. I think. Oh yeah, that's fine. Yeah. I mean, I'll do it. I know, but shut up. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, I'll... You can't make me. There it is. Yeah. I defy you. Unless. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, 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 that is it for this week. Uh, if you want to buy some merch, go to ghostfacerspodcaststore.com. And also, if you want to listen to our other stuff, we yeah. got another podcast. Yeah, check out the Dr. DC podcast. We talk about DC comics and superheroes and the lore of yeah. superheroes and shit like that. We answer listener questions. You don't need to like be a comics nerd or know anything about it but if you like the way we talk about monsters and stuff on this show you might enjoy that we might teach you a few things too yeah we might learn you a little something <laughs> <laughs> uh all right say goodbye bitch jerk podcast.